Hello everyone. I've been getting a lot of questions about my system, so I figured I'd just do a little walkthrough and hopefully answer everyone's questions with one shot. Uh, I started off with some larger IBC totes, and I hacked off the top using a hacksaw. Uh, hacked off the uh, top frame using a hacksaw, and then I top cut the top off using a jigsaw. Um, these are four foot by four foot hydroponic trays and they sit nested perfectly inside the system so that you can just kind of use it as a cover. Uh, these IBC totes themselves, the plastic is thick enough that it'll hold it up no problem as long as you don't put too much weight into it. Now the reason why I did that, uh, this is the working system and this is the fish tank. Um, the reason why I did that is I drilled a hole in the bottom of it and that's how I run my air lines and I put my air pump in here so that it doesn't uh, get wet if it rains. Um, down here, as you can see, I'm right now I'm running a single 100 watt heater because it is winter time and I have about 20 goldfish down there. You can kind of see them swimming around. And then down there in that corner is where I have my single pump. Now, I'm running a 400 series pump. It's kind of large, and the reason it's large is I want to make sure it overruns my single drainage, but I'll get to that later. Now, attached to my fish tank is my uh, water bed, and my water bed has all of these uh, floating, uh, these are actually called six inch net pots, and these are floating um, on little rafts of uh, foam pool noodles I made and um, they're basically sitting in such a way that a little, the bottom of it is just touching water and the top of it's dry. Um, so um, this is a good example of how I plan on using it. That is a commercially bought lettuce head from a grocery store. Um, you could already see, start seeing some of the little green shoots starting to grow uh, on the side here. Uh, and then when the roots start growing down, I'll start lifting the plant up. And then hopefully, um, if the plant survives, it will be flushed to the top of this and there will be a nice head of lettuce or romaine or whatever this was. Over here, uh, I have my media bed. Uh, and this media bed is filled with uh, lava stones or hydratons or expanded clay pellets, whatever you want to call them. Um, and I like using these little um, um, uh, wick um, grow dams. You just shove a seed in it and just make sure that it's sitting in low enough that water touches it and I just walk away and eventually a plant grows out of it. Uh, these are all green onions. These are all also commercially bought. I just cut off the top. Let me pull it out. Uh, here you can see a new root development. It's growing these new roots on the side. So that's a good sign that this plant's going to be healthy. Let me put that back. Uh oh there we go and hopefully it'll turn into green onions as you can see some of these are slightly older ones I've already harvested once before uh, and they grow really healthy and they grow really fast uh, I'm waiting for the weather to warm up and I'm sure I'll start seeing, seeing uh, shoots sprout up and I have some kale going over there now um, let me explain some of how the system works now there is a single pump with a three-quarter inch hose that goes to the top here and over here at the end of the hose is actually a nozzle a, sp a little spray nozzle and this tube you can't really see it but goes all the way down and presses up against the wall of the tray now the reason why all of this is important is if you just stick the hose up on top then you get a lot of splashing and a lot of efficiency loss and a lot of uh, loss of water if you stick the tube into the hydrotons there's a possibility that um, a, when the pump turns off, vacuum pressure will be created when it's actually going back and it'll actually siphon the hydroton ball back. And that might, it might be enough to actually take it all the way back and um, jam the pump. That's actually happened on this system twice in the first four to six hours and before I came up with this. And this is basically a piece of black PVC tube supported by bricks. And basically the nozzle is pointing up and all of the water goes down into the media tray and there is very 
um, minimal splashing. In fact, there is no splashing and um, it keeps all of the water inside the media bed, which is important. Uh, the media itself, all of these hydroton um, stones, will act as a physical media filter or, or act as a physical filter to catch all of the fish poop and all of the other stuff that the pump is sucking up. Now, down here, there is a, another piece of ABS tube uh, and it's fitted to go all the way down and if you look down there there's no hydrotons and that's to help the water flow and on this black ABS tube there's a bunch of holes cross drilled so that water will drain down as efficiently as possible and down here you can also see it here now the reason why I do these things only running a single drain and running a cylinder is a running the cylinder with that little uh, drainage cap prevents hydrotons and other material from clogging up that single drain which will ultimately cause a problem also having this uh, little thing on top I could just kind of push back the hydrotons remove this top and I can actually service or clear the drain or mess with it and you can see it down there okay and then just as a secondary precaution and to make sure that the water levels never get too high, I put three secondary drains. And if you notice, the secondary drains all drain back into the water bed. Now, I've done it in such a way using these hydroponic um, ebb and flow fittings, uh, some 90 degree elbows and some tubing. Uh, but what's really important is I kind of put it in such a way that even if there is a leak, it should still drain properly back to, so that I won't have a flooding or loss of water situation. Um, I'm using these pool noodles to kind of hold everything over here in place. I do plan on getting a secondary um, air pump and run a line to these four points over here so that when these air bubbles turn on and the water flows down, it will actually provide a nice bit of air for all of the roots that will grow underneath these pods. And then, as soon as the water level rises to a certain point from the pump, it will then flow back and drain. Now, if you notice right now, my water level is a little bit high, again, because of the rain. Um, and I did have to remove some water. Now, in the situation where there is uh, a flood or like so much rain that it overflows the system, this is where it will overflow and it will it will overflow minimally so you won't get a dilute situation but you will just get a little bit of water seeping off the side of this container um, and then as soon as the sun comes out and the weather warms up the water level will then just recede naturally um, down below I'm using old school desks they're great because they're actually adjustable height um, and then I've propped them up on bricks and wood to get everything level so hopefully that answers some of your questions. Um, if you got any more, please let me know. Um, that piece of styrofoam is in there, again, just to kind of help trap some of the heat inside the water. Um, again, because it's winter time and it's a little bit cold. Happy gardening, guys.